I struggled with eating disorders until I was 16 and I went right back to diet culture after I had struggled with an eating disorder and I didn't get out of that world of everything being about my body and numbers and weight until I was 21 and I found the body positive movement. I was just scrolling on Instagram one day, I was looking at Fitspo, I was looking at supermodels and I found the opposite and I found a bunch of people of all shapes and sizes talking about accepting themselves and not dieting anymore. My name is Megan Jane Crabb and this is The Female Lead. You know, I'd lived my whole life under the belief that there was only one way to be happy and to be good enough. And suddenly there were these people saying, what if that's not necessarily true? And it made me just reflect a little bit and be honest with myself about the fact that if that was true, if I could find happiness and fulfillment and, and a perfect life by changing my body, how come it hadn't happened yet? Because I'd been every size under the sun, I'd done every diet imaginable, I'd changed and molded myself and it hadn't worked. So surely I owed myself a chance at something different. And I think it's that feeling empowered enough to ask questions and be honest with myself and take risks that led me back to myself. My family is incredibly supportive. So my dad is a teacher. My mom is the most caring person I have ever met. She is just a carer by nature. I have two siblings. My oldest sister, Gemma, is absolutely the spark of the family. She is sassy as hell and I'm part of her care team. She has cerebral palsy and we all take shifts with her. She really has taught me a whole lot about not apologizing for who I am. And I realized that when we see disabled people represented, we tend to either get trauma porn or absolute inspiration goals. We don't necessarily get to see disabled people being just multifaceted human beings. And my sister deserves to be seen. And I think it, it means something to be able to, to see disabled people just being people and doing silly stuff and having fun. And as, as much as she is, uh, she's just a bringer of joy, that is underlying it for me. Something I wish that I was more okay with as a teenager, and, and that I'm still working on now, is accepting that life is messy. And I think often we grab onto things that we think we can control to make things feel less messy and to make it feel like we have a bit of power over stuff. And for me, that was my body. You know, I grabbed onto it and I thought, if I can make this thing perfect, then everything will be okay and I'll be happy. And um, looking back, there's, there's no one quick fix answer. There's no one thing that you can grab onto control and then nothing's messy anymore because it still will be. It will still be more complicated than you realize. And I think, I just wish that I could have cozied down a little bit more with the messiness of life. Body positivity six years ago wasn't the very well-known thing that it is today, but it just started to pick up as I was exploring it myself. I was just using social media as a diary. Happiness really isn't a size and you can be happy in the body that you have, even if it's bigger than it once was. We're tricked into thinking that once we hit that perfect body, we'll be happy, we'll feel beautiful and it's never enough. And when I hear people saying, uh, I, I read your book and I stopped dieting and decided to go to university, decided to travel the world, decided to tell this person who I've always had a crush on that I have feelings for them and their life changes because of that, that's it, that's it. It doesn't, um, it's not my priority that people you know, look in the mirror and think, I look good, like I like that. I like when you think that. But um, that's not top priority for me. I just, I want you to know that you're more and I want you to go after a life that is about more.